Machine quilting with rulers is great for quilting nice straight lines and curves. But did you know it's easy to quilt a point with a ruler? It just takes a simple movement. Hey, I'm Angela Walters from Quilting is My Therapy and welcome back to the latest video in our Mastering Quilting with Rulers series. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to quilt a border design with the outside of Taj and we'll learn how to get those nice sharp points. I'm gonna show you on a sewing machine and a long arm, so let's get going. To quilt my pointed arcs in the gray strip of my quilt, I'm gonna start from the center and work my way out. Mostly just because that's how I prefer to do it. I'm gonna start about a quarter of an inch or so away from the edge of the strip that I'm quilting, line the reference lines on my ruler on the seam, and then quilt along the edge of my ruler till I get just to the very tippy point. I'm not gonna go all the way around though, and you'll see why in just a second. Once I get to the very end of my ruler and I can't go any further, I'm gonna stop and reposition my point to the other side. It's gonna make my arch a little shorter, but it's also gonna give me a nice pointed arc. If I were just to quilt around the outside of it, it would be more curvy, more rounded, definitely not the look I'm going for. Once I move it over, then I'll continue down the other side. Now I have the ruler positioned horizontally on the quilt, but I'm moving in a vertical motion. I prefer to do this because I feel like I have more control of the ruler. However, if you don't like working from behind the needle, you could rotate the quilt so that you're quilting horizontally. Once I reach the other seam, I'm gonna leave the needle in down position and then reposition the ruler. Then I'm gonna work my way along the ruler and back to the other side. When working with curved rulers of any kind, remember you can always change your hand position. So as I'm quilting, if I don't like where my hands are, I can just stop, reposition, and then continue on. Now, if you purchase the coordinating thread collection, go ahead and use the gray thread in this area. I'm using the hot pink thread so you can really see the quilting. This is not something I would normally do on a regular quilt. I'm gonna work my way along the strip and I'm not worried about if I'm gonna end on a full or a half one. I'm just going until I run out of room. I'm pretending that this seam is the boundary of my strip. Even though it's the same color, I'm gonna treat this as a separate border later on. So I'm gonna quilt along it until I run into that line, which is gonna be right about here. And there I have my first row of arcs. And you could just leave it like that, especially if you need to get the quilt done fast. But I like a little bit more quilting, so what I'm gonna do is work my way back, quilting the same shape. However, I'm gonna offset them so my points end up really close to the middle of the previous points. But the question isn't whether I want to quilt another row, it's how do I make it land where I need it to go? Using this previously quilted row as my guide, I know that I need to make the next bottom end somewhere below here. Trust me, it doesn't have to be exact, we're just kind of going for roughly. So if I take my ruler and I position it where I need that to end, I know that I need to move up a little bit so that I can get to that point. So I'm gonna use my ruler as my guide to help me find out exactly where I need to end. So I'm gonna travel up a little bit. If this were a seam along the whole strip, it wouldn't be noticeable. I'm gonna pause and I'm gonna use my ruler again to help me eyeball where that's gonna end. And I'm getting really close. So I've traveled up the edge a bit and now I'm gonna use my ruler to see where it is I need to end up at. Lining up my ruler where it would go, I'm gonna look and imagine where my line is gonna end up. I might go up just a hair more now that it looks somewhat good, I'm gonna go ahead and work my way back, offsetting my pointed arcs. This time I'll do a couple where the ruler is vertical, but I'm moving horizontally along the strip. Now let's pretend that you don't get it measured out quite right and you realize that your arcs are off. One thing that you can do is reposition the ruler to extend that line. And I'm gonna stop when I'm directly above that loop down there. It'll look just a little bit off, but at least it will be symmetrical and positioned where you want it to be. Now it's the shape of the ruler that makes these lines overlap and gives it a really neat look. Then remember as you come up to your point, Instead of going around, I'm just gonna reposition the ruler to the side and then continue down the opposite side. Now, just like I did with the other side, I'm gonna quilt until I run into the edge of my area. 
and the result is a beautiful overlapping pointed arch design that works great in strips or larger borders. Let's see a slightly different variation where we offset the arcs, but we also flip them around. Now when I go to quilt my second row, instead of quilting along the ruler like this, I'm going to flip it around and work from the other side, and it's going to make the points on alternating sides. This variation is going to give you a more complex looking border design with diamonds and loops, but it's also easier to get it off track. So be sure to pay attention to where you're placing your ruler, and remember, as long as you fill in the whole thing, it's going to look fine. Now let's see how easy it is to quilt those on the long arm. The main difference with using rulers on a sewing machine and a long arm is that you cannot easily change the position of your quilt. Obviously, it's put in place. So that means you're going to have to work from all sides of your foot, especially if you're quilting them upside down from each other. Everything else is still the same. You're still going to go to the point, stop just before you go around the outside, reposition the ruler to the other side of the foot, and then go back down. And that's what's going to give you that nice pointed arc. One thing that definitely happens with me and quilting with rulers is I tend to put a little too much force onto the ruler and sometimes the ruler will move out of position. The best trick for that is to take your time and feel comfortable stopping in the middle of a curve and repositioning your hands. For some reason I get it in my head that I have to quilt along the whole ruler without stopping and that's not the case. And there I have my first row of arcs. What I'm going to do is work my way back quilting the same shape. So I'm going to travel up a little bit I'm going to offset them so my points end up to the middle of the previous points. Now just like with straight rulers, I only want to quilt where I have control of the ruler, so I'm not going to hold it up at the point when I want to go around the outside. I'm going to take my time and really try to keep my fingers on the side of the ruler that I'm quilting along. And remember, even if you have a bobble or if it's not perfect, it's going to be fine once the whole quilt is finished especially if you're using that matching thread color, which is going to give it a beautiful texture. Now that you know how to get that nice, crisp point, go ahead and quilt the overlapping arc design in the bigger gray strips on your quilt. You can overlap them, you can try variation, you can quilt one row, whatever you feel like doing. If you're not sure what to do though, don't worry, I have a free downloadable PDF that you can get in the description box below. And I'll be back soon with another video where we're going to learn to use the inside of Taj as an all-over meander totally different look with the same exact ruler. I'll see you then.